This is video 3, part 2, of my RV suitcase solar panel series. In video 3, part 1, I discussed options for locating the charge controller and the reasoning behind those options. In part 2, which is the video you're watching, I will actually install the charge controller. If you've not watched video 3, part 1, I will provide a link to that video here. In order to demonstrate the different hookups for the solar controller, I had to buy some cable. This is 25 foot cable of what is called SJOOW, which is a type designator for cable. SJO basically means it's 300 volt cable, and this is just a standard uh, extension cord type cable, but it's heavy duty. And OW means that it's water resistant. Since it's intended for up to 300 volts, it has black and white, and I marked the white lead with red. This is available by the foot, and it's only two conductors, 25 foot. And I'll post a link to where I bought this on my website. And I'm not an affiliate with them, so I don't get any money from them. It's just a place that has a good selection of wire. And I've already put the solar ends on one end. And I'm going to do it just to demonstrate how it's done on the other end. And when you buy these field installable MC4 connectors, you get a male connector with a gland and a cap. And also a female connector with a gland and a cap as well. And then you have a female contact and a male contact. Now it's interesting that the female contact mates with the male connector. The male contact goes into the female housing. And you can see from this graphic that each wire has a female and a male conductor on the opposite ends. This allows these cables to maintain the correct polarity. And I have a kit made by IWSS. And it includes a set of tools for the MC4 connectors a cable cutter, and a crimper. And I'm going to use the center crimp. And I found it easiest just to get the thing started. And now we insert the wire, and then we can crimp down all the way. And there we go, we have a solid crimp. So inspect your work, we have two good crimps. Male contact goes into female housing, and they just snap in and they won't come out. And the neat thing is, that this can turn so you're not going to damage your connector and tighten it down. And if I've done everything correctly, you should be able to connect your two white wires together and the two black wires together. And the charge controller that I will be using is the Renergy Wanderer. This one is a little different than the Voyager charge controller that comes with the suitcase solar panel. The Voyager is a 20 amp controller while the Wanderer is a 10 amp controller. The main issue though with the Wanderer is that it is not waterproof, so it is not ideal for use at the solar panel. The Wanderer is also PWM and it also has a circuit for the load which I will not use. The load circuit can disconnect the load when the batteries get low. However, in an RV environment, having high current demand levelers and slide out motors, this is not a workable solution. So we won't be using the load disconnect feature of the Wanderer. There are also USB ports for charging portable devices and a RS-232 port for an optional Bluetooth dongle for remote control from your smartphone. Given that this is a 10 amp controller, it works best with a 100 watt solar panel, which is what I have. So, we will test the circuit with the Wanderer charge controller, then install it into the RV, leaving the Voyager controller attached to the solar panels unused. That way I can retain the true portability of the suitcase charger by simply rearranging the cables. As I did in the first video, I am using this AGM battery. That way when we do our tests, we are keeping the system isolated from the RV. Since we are actively using the RV with its battery charger and devices under operation, connecting the charge controller to the RV's battery could skew the results. And we show about 12.2 volts on the battery, so it's maybe 50% discharged. The solar panel is not yet connected. But first, we had to set the battery for SEL, which is sealed AGM. The display must be in battery volts to change the battery type. Flooded, which is lead acid, sealed, and gel. We will select SEL sealed for our AGM battery. For this first test, I have disconnected the Voyager charge controller at the solar panel. Next, I connected the Wanderer charge controller to the solar panel, replacing the Voyager. We will be comparing the operation of the Wanderer charge controller at both the solar panel and at the battery. 
and we will use the 25 foot cable we just made between the solar panel and battery to measure what voltage drop occurs across that cable. When we connect to the battery, we measure 14.2 volts for the battery connection at the charge controller. And at the battery, we are measuring 13.7 volts, so we are losing one half volt along the 25 foot cable. That will result in poor performance of the charging system. Next, we will relocate the charge controller at the battery with the 25 foot cable between the charge controller and the solar panel. And we now see 14.3 volts at the battery, so there is no voltage drop from the charge controller to the battery which results in improved charging. So we have just proven our theory from the last video that the preferred location of the charge controller is at the battery keeping the leads from the charger to battery as short as possible and any extension wire should be located between the charge controller and the solar panel. And to help install the charge controller in the RV I just 3D printed this little box and put a switch in it and a fuse in it and if you don't have a 3D printer you can just find any kind of box you know and put a switch in it and this way I can disconnect the battery from the charge controller because I may go months without using the solar panels and I don't want the charge controller to be a constant drain on the battery of course again it doesn't discharge the battery a lot but if you watch any of my other videos you know that whenever possible I try to turn all power off from the battery if it's not needed and now I have installed the Renogy Wanderer inside of the RV next to the battery. And I have 13.7 volts on the battery, which is okay in this case, since the battery is in operation and the charger is in absorption or normal mode. Again, the Voyager charge controller in the solar panel has been disconnected and it remains there so that I can use the panel for standalone operation if I need to. And if you like the solar video series, please subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when the next one comes out. And also, I have over 500 RV project-oriented videos, and you can go to my website and find where the projects are. I do have a companion website for every video that I do. So this wraps up part two of video three. Next up is video four, where I compare PWM to MPPT charge controllers.